See one of the reasons Apostle Jesus Shama say he still tightening. And I want you to listen to him and be blessed by the message that the Lord has for you. No matter what people say about tithe, there are people that still understand what God is doing and what and why they should tithe. Follow this message up and remain blessed. If you have not subscribed to this channel, I want to encourage you to do so. God bless you. Tell you, I have still not found a reason to stop tithing. I have examined the thoughts across boards. Leviticus chapter 27 and verse 30. The reason why people argue about tithe is number one, because they think tithe is about money. Tithe is not about money. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. This has nothing to do with a dispensation. This is an ordinance. Let me submit to you. There are two reasons why I think the tithe issue has become a controversy in the body of Christ. Number one, and is because of the way we men of God drum it. We drum it because we need the money and because there have been a, a lot of misuse and extravagance with God's money. People have played all kinds of games with God's money at the expense of people's sacrifices. And not everybody in church, uh, people, God's people are not dummies. When they watch and they see that the value you are, pro you are producing does not match the kind of affluence and extravagance you are communicating, someone will be sensitive enough to ask questions. And because a tithe is a tenth portion, there is nothing to hide about tithe. Tithe, financially speaking, is a tenth portion of what you bring. And let me tell you, if that is combined from faithful people, it is a lot. Bankers, am I right? It is a lot. What is there to hide? Tithe was supposed to be a mechanism. Listen to me. According to scripture, the tithe was supposed to be a mechanism to cater for priesthood and to cater for the building of the Lord's house. To cater for priesthood. Remember, there was a time when the children of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, are we Bible students, that while they were boiling the meat, they were given the privilege of using a fork to pick without looking. The scene there became when they now started opening the whole pot and they would look for the choice part of the meat and use it. And God said, no, this is not. I gave you the privilege to at least pick something. Now, there are all kinds of policies and principles. I'm not going into the legalities of ministries and Christian organizations and all of that. But I can tell you it is because of the annoyance of people from the carelessness, the recklessness, and the misuse of God's money. This is what has led people into this anger that has evolved into this campaign. There are a few people who have intelligently studied. And based on their conclusion, they feel this is not needed. But I tell you, the root of most of this tight problem has come because of an, a, a level of integrity that has not been effectively communicated. Are we together? But I submit to you, and as far as it is within the jurisdiction of this spiritual family, I can tell you, be a faithful tither. Tight is a tenth portion, according to scripture, one tenth. Now, I know that a lot of people have thought to bring 50% of your tithe, 80% of your tithe. The Bible does not say that. If God tells you personally, it is a personalized dealing. Don't create a doctrine out of it and punish people. Within the boundary of contentment and vision, 10% of what God's people bring should be sufficient to run the activities of the ministry within the boundary of contentment, vision, and integrity. Are we learning? Yes, sir. So let me encourage you, based on the truth of scripture I have learned, based on the experience of veterans who have been, who have truly prospered by God, I can tell you, do not stop tithing. If you don't have the revelation, settle down and get the revelation. Don't do it religiously. But as far as this house is concerned, as a ministry, we are a tithing ministry. As an individual, I'm a tithing person. And I can tell you, tithe is not about money. It is called the law of open heavens. According to Malachi chapter 3, when you begin to read from verse 8, it says, will a man rob God? It says, but ye say, wherein have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. So the Bible is talking about robbery here. It says, ye are cursed with a curse. This is not the curse of the law. No. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Verse 10. It says, bring ye how many? All the tithes. 
into my storehouse in another series we'll have the time to discuss what storehouse is because there are three platforms that qualify to be called a storehouse in fact i think i should just say it in one minute number one a storehouse means your place of primary spiritual nourishment it qualifies it is the first biblical platform that is called a storehouse your place of primary spiritual nourishment number two a storehouse also refers to any ministry that is committed to the salvation of souls and the transformation of lives these two things must be there if it is not actively committed to the salvation of souls and the equipping of the saints it does not qualify to be called a storehouse it's an uncomfortable truth but this is the truth and then number three the storehouse can also by extension refer to an individual a minister who is committed to the salvation of souls and the equipping of the saints there are conditions where an individual can be regarded as a storehouse these are the three just take it like this for now in another series as god grants us grace we'll open deeper into this i just didn't want to leave that gray area but it says bring ye all the tithes into my storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now here which said the lord there are seven prophetic blessings according to scripture here that follow the title number one god will open for you the windows of heaven number two you will we will pour out a blessing that you will not have room enough for it fathers like kenneth copeland will call it concepts insights and ideas next verse it says i will rebuke the devourer the third the devourer is a waster that comes to bring all kinds of waste on legal basis to your life number four he says he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground your ground is anywhere you plant can be your business can be your life and then number five he said neither shall your vine cast its young before its time number six he says you shall be called you shall be a delightsome land please go to um all nations shall call you blessed verse 12 and ye shall be a delightsome land seven prophetic blessings according to scripture when Jesus was rebuking the scribes and the Pharisees for their being hypocritical, he did not negate the subject of tithing. He said, you tithe and you do all of these things and you negate the weightier matter. So Jesus identified this as part of the things that the believers should know. Tithe is very important. Number three. So number one is the law of absolute surrender. Number two is the law of the tithe. And then number three is called the law of giving. You can put in bracket the law of seed time and harvest. These are the three spiritual laws principally. Now under the law of seed time and harvest, there are so many, I don't want to run into it this night. But then it's sufficient for you to know that the law of giving, the law of seed time and harvest is a foundational spiritual law. Are we together now? Very important. Luke chapter 6 and verse 38, we read it earlier. Here's what it says. It says, give. And it shall be given unto you. So the Bible states clearly here that when you give, it shall be given unto you. Genesis chapter 8 and verse 22, we're rushing for time. This was Noah after the flood. And a proclamation came from heaven on account of the sacrifice that he read. It says, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease this is an ordinance that will last while the earth remains that means anytime you don't find the earth stop obeying the law but provided you can see the earth you should know the law is in force what is seed time and harvest it means that the economic system of the kingdom runs on the principle of seed time and harvest spiritually speaking that anything you do not have it is because you did not plant the seed for it and seed here does not mean money if you want a harvest of kindness sow the seed of kindness if you want there are seeds and their corresponding harvests honor listen carefully honor is the seed for a harvest called access good understanding is the seed for a harvest called favor diligence listen carefully is the seed for what we call lifting so it is about understanding seeds and harvest a question is the seed for an answer knowledge and wisdom are the keys for enlightenment are we together now yes there are different kinds of giving the bible now switches to let us know that giving and receiving is sowing and reaping that in this kingdom every time you give you are a farmer 
who is sowing. Second Corinthians chapter 9. We'll start from verse 6. So we've identified the fact that the Bible talks about giving and receiving. It says, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Go ahead, 7. It says, every man, here is the condition, and this is the cure for manipulation and control in the church. Every man according as he has purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, nor of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Verse 8, and God, by reason of your sowing, have you seen that he's talking about sowing and reaping? Now he turns to giving and receiving. So in the kingdom, one of the ways that we sow is by giving. One of the ways that we reap is by receiving. He says, God is able to make all grace abound towards you, so that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound unto every good work. Can I be honest with you? Ask anybody who God has lifted in the kingdom. If you do not engage the law of giving and receiving, there is a limit. In fact, you may not be able to rise to certain realms. Now, there are different kinds of givings with different levels of harvest allocated to them. Let me just run down. I may not have the time to explain them. Our time is already spent. Forgive me. We have what we call the worship offering. According to Deuteronomy 16, 16, the Bible says to not come before him empty. I'm trying to run very quickly. So there is what we call the worship offering. That when you come before God, it is not a compulsion. It's out of revelation that you should not come to the house of God empty. Based on revelation as proof of your love for him. So there is the worship offering. Number two, there is what we call kingdom investments. This is one of the major giving platforms that fulfills the spiritual law of wealth and abundance Haggai chapter 1 I believe am I right on that? yes when you read from verse 2 and 3 Haggai the prophet was speaking chapter 1 from verse 2 and 3 he says thus speaketh the Lord of hosts saying these people say the time is not come the time that the Lord's house should be built verse 3 he says am I right on that? Verse 3. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet saying, Aha, uh -huh, next verse, let's see. Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie waste? Kingdom investment. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. It says, Ye have sown much and bring in little. This is the result. Ye eat but have not enough. Ye drink but are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you but there is none warm. And he that earned wages, only earned wages to put it into a bag that has holes. What is the message here? That your, your participation in the Lord's work, you shouldn't wait until there is a call. By the way, there is absolutely nothing wrong in calling people to give, provided the needs are clear, the revelation is there, and it is done within the boundary of integrity. The key word always is integrity. Are we together? There is nothing wrong with a man. I have gone to many places to preach and the people have come together and raised an offering to honor me and I have blessed them and prayed even in my secret place that God will bless them. There are times that the, the, the Lord, a church can agree together and put resources together and say, look, come and sow. We've done this as a ministry and I'm sure that we'll still do it as the days come. Soon we're going to be looking at our building project and God will grant us that grace. So there is nothing wrong. The key word is integrity and truth. Are we blessed? Kingdom investments. There are others like seed faith. Connecting your seed and your, your faith through a seed for a desired expectation. It's based on the principle of resurrection. The Bible says that every seed can die. And that not only do you reap what you sow. God is able to give your seed another body. You can sow shame and reap joy. You can use your seed to kill negative seasons in your life. I have taught this. The principle of seed faith is based on the principle of resurrection. The same way the old heaven and the old earth can pass away, you can use a seed and take a season that you don't like out of your life. You can tie it by faith. This is why it is dangerous to steal money in church. Because that money you see is only a tray. There are people putting courses on it, putting all kinds of yoke seasons that they want out of their life. When you steal money from church, you don't allow the seed to die. Ask Gehazi and Naaman. Just because leprosy left Naaman did not mean it went away. It was waiting. And a man used a seed to bring it back to his life. I have used this as a principle. 
There are many people who have used the principle of seed faith. There are others like prophet offering. When I said it during the school of ministry, the students were laughing. Prophet's offering. Because that one has brought a lot of trouble. You know, we men of God, sometimes because we need money, we drum the issue of prophet offering. But the truth is that prophet offering is true. You can actually use a seed ethically. I, I, I wish I'm not the one who has to say this. But generally, according to scripture, you should not really go to meet a man empty-handed. It is scriptural, but it's just that those who have taught it, have taught it, with, they've robbed in all kinds of biases that makes it to look untrue. But it is true. As much as possible, it's a kingdom culture you should learn. Especially a man of God who has labored obviously in word and doctrine. As much as possible. This is not to make you uncomfortable in any way here. But I am telling you, I owe you to teach you the truth. I have never gone to meet any man of God. In fact, in principle, it is not my culture to meet people and not sow into their lives. Then there is sowing to parents, both spiritual and physical, that attracts patriarchal blessings. These are different levels of giving. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother in the Lord, that your days may be long and that it shall be well with you. These are principles. There is the principle of first fruit that has largely been misunderstood in, in many circles, respectfully speaking. But I believe that principle is valid and again within the boundary of revelation and truth, that principle can be engaged. There are many others, sacrifice, vows. So all of these are there. But let me tell you, there are three that I know by revelation and by scripture that are directly related to the lifting of men. One is kingdom investments. Being act, an active participant in the work of the kingdom. Number two, prophet's offering. If done with revelation and understanding, you can sow into an anointing that will lift you in a way that will surprise you. God gave gifts to men. And these gifts did not come empty. And then number three, seed faith. Where you can tie an expectation to end seasons and open others. These three I have practiced in my life. And have revealed to many who have practiced this ministry. Has practiced this. Kingdom investments, prophets offering. And seed faith. I sincere appreciate you for watching this message and I believe that the Lord has given you his word and I know that you will run with it. May you remain blessed in Jesus' name.